Hello friends, this video on forests and wildlife part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction, Flora and Fauna, Depletion of Forests and Wildlife, Conservation of Forests and Wildlife, Forest Types, Community and Conservation. So first of all, let us try to understand what exactly are we going to study in forests and wildlife. How are they important to us? Now, one thing which we have been studying since our junior classes that all living organisms are dependent on each other for their existence. Now, we all know this, but let us look at this scenario, which will very clearly show that this truly happens. Now, let us think of this lion. Now, this lion is dependent on other animals like the deer for its food, right? Now, the deer in turn depend upon the plants for their food, right? So, we see that the animals are interdependent on each other because no one can survive without food. So, these animals are dependent on each other. But not only this, this plant also needs a couple of things like soil from where it will get all the nutrients, it needs water, it needs air for its survival, right? So that means the living organisms not only depend on each other, but it also depends on a couple of non-living components in the environment. Clear? Now what do we see here? We see that when we look at this ecosystem of a forest, we see that the animals are dependent on each other. What about humans? So we humans are also dependent on all these organisms in the forest. For example, we get wood from where? So the wood comes from the forest and using that wood, we construct huge buildings buildings, hospitals, schools, so any sort of constructions that you see, most of the construction materials, they come from the forest, right? So what we understand from this is all living organisms depend on each other for their existence. Now, if we talk about plants and animals, because when we talk about forests and wildlife, we are mostly going to talk about these two things, plants and animals. And we see that both of them are equally important because they together maintain the balance of the most important gases in the atmosphere. For example, plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen, whereas animals take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So in this fashion, we see that there is a balance which has been created between the different living organisms on this earth. So, what we understand is all living organisms, whether it is a plant or it is an animal, is important. Now, the question is, why are we talking about forests and wildlife as resources? How can we consider them, forests and wildlife, as resources? So, we have learned in our previous lesson that what is a resource? So, a resource is any such material that exists in nature from which we can benefit, which can be used for our benefit. So that is a resource. Now, how do you think that forests and wildlife can be resources to us? Now, if you see, we get wood, which can be used as a fuel, which can be used for various construction uh, work is obtained from forests. Not only that, Food, which is a very, very important component. No one can survive without food. And from where do we get food? We get food from the trees in the forests. For example, if you look at, um, I mean, there are different varieties of food rather. So if you look at the dairy products, whether it is milk, butter, cheese, paneer, all sort of dairy products are obtained from dairy animals like cow, goat, buffalo. And what, where do these animals live? So these animals are also part of wildlife. Again, if you look at uh, the food items like egg, meat, fish, they are also obtained from other animals. If you look at the vegetables, the fruits, seeds, all of these are plant products. So we see that the food items that we eat, they are obtained either from plants or from animals directly or indirectly. 
So we see that forests and wildlife are resources because they give us food, because they give us a lot of raw materials which are used for construction purposes where we live. Not only that, they give us water and water is important for our survival. Clothes that we wear, what are these clothes made up of? So the clothes are either made up of cotton or jute which are obtained from plants or they could be made up of silk which is obtained from silk worm which is an animal right so what do we see we see that so these are just few of the things which we did from which we can be can benefit from the forests and wildlife so looking at this you must have got an idea that undoubtedly forests and wildlife are excellent resources for us and that is why it is important that we take care of them we protect them we preserve them now when we talk about forests we need to know these two terms flora and fauna now what do we mean by them now flora refers to the plant community in a forest whereas fauna refers to the animal community in a forest. Now you might be wondering that the two terms are very similar. So how do we remember them? How do we know which term is for what? Now if you look at the word flora, it resembles flower. The flower is a part of the plant. So flora is for plant community. If you look at fauna, just focus on this part, fauna. Ona resembles animal. Ona animal. Ona animal. So fauna is for the animal community. So that's how you can remember flora and fauna. So flora would mean all sort of plants that you see in a forest. It could be huge trees. It could be shrubs. It, it could be grasses. All sort of trees and plants could come under flora. Fauna would include all sort of animals, whether uh, you consider animals like lion, tiger, uh, elephant, giraffe, like all the big animals or the birds or even the tiny insects or frogs or any animal would come under fauna. So it's important that you know these two terms because uh, while going ahead, sometimes we might use these terms. So you should not, you know, wonder that what are they. So that's about flora and fauna. So when we talk about forests, we talk about both flora and fauna because these two com components together form the forest. Now, the unfortunate part is that these days we are seeing that a lot of plants and animals in the forest are decreasing or some of them are even becoming extinct that is they are vanishing from this earth we do not see them anymore so that is happening with a lot of plant and animal species so that is why we have come up with this categorization of the existing species of flora and fauna now what who did this classification iucn so IUCN stands for International Union of for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. So I think the full form of this word itself told what this organization does. So the main aim of this organization is to conserve nature and the natural resources. So the main motto of IUCN is to protect the plant and animal species from being extinct. So we want to protect them. We want them to live and exist on the earth. So that is the main motto of IUCN. And that is why IUCN has come up with this classification where it tells us that a particular plant or animal species is in which category. So what are those categories? So there are six categories. Normal species, endangered species, vulnerable species, rare species, endemic species and extinct species. Now what are each of these that we will understand one after another. But for now you have to understand that IUCN came up with this classification because there was an alarming situation which told that a lot of plant and animal spe species were disappearing from earth. 
which was not desirable because we wanted all living organisms to exist. Why? Because we saw just now that all living organisms need each other for their better survival. Okay, let's start with the first category that is normal species. So these are those species whose population levels are normal for their survival. So that means it is, so no abnormality is seen in the population of such species. So they have good population. For example, cow, goat, in fact, cattle, pine trees, roses. So these are all examples of such uh, species who have a decent population. So we do not see any sort of decrease in their population. So they are categorized under normal species. Now let's move on to the second one that is endangered species. So the name itself has danger. That means there is something danger related to this. So population levels are declining. Therefore, they are in the danger of extinction. Extinction means so, so the that particular so to disappear that is extinction that means you do not see that species anymore okay so endangered species are those where we see that their population is decreasing and it is decreasing at quite a fast rate which puts it in the danger of extinction so some of the examples of endangered species are the indian rhinoceros crocodile black bug so all these are examples of endangered species. Now the moment certain species are marked or classified under endangered, that actually means that we need to take extra care so that we are able to retain them because their population levels are decreasing. So we actually have a very few of them. And if we lose them as well, then we will lose the entire species forever. So that is why we need to try our best to protect and preserve the remaining population of these endangered species. Let's move on to the next category that is vulnerable. So vulnerable would include the population levels have declined, likely to move into the endangered category. So here also we see a decrease in the population level, but not a very steep decrease. However, since there is a decrease in population level which is seen, so there is a chance that it might move into the endangered category. So that means endangered category is like a more serious category where you know immediate action needs to be taken vulnerable category is slightly less severe than the endangered category however whenever we see that uh, a particular species is categorized under vulnerable that means that even though it is not endangered but there are high chances that it might move into the endangered category so here uh, the examples would be the Asiatic elephant, the blue ship. Now the best part about blue ship is that it is neither blue in color nor it is a ship. So basically it is a, it, it a ship-like creature which is not ship and uh, it is generally found in the mountainous regions. Then we have the dolphins, the gangetic dolphins. So these are all examples of species which fall under the vulnerable category. So if proper conservation measures are not taken, then there are chances that all these species, the elephant or the blue ship, they might move into the endangered category. Next, the fourth category is rare species. The term rare itself means something that doesn't occur very often. So that is rare. So when we say rare, that actually means that such species have a small population and higher risk of extinction. Now normally what happens when you have a species with a very high population, let's say that you have one species with uh, maybe 1000 population and you have another species with a population of 10. Now, where do you think that the risk of extinction is more? Obviously, in the second case. Why? Because here, if you are somehow able to finish off these 10 existing creatures and then you are done, the species will be extinct. But in this case, you will have to finish off the 1000 creatures, which is a slightly 
more difficult task. So therefore, for species with a very small population, the risk of extinction is more. So these kind of species are called rare species. So for rare species, small, small negative actions can easily move them into the endangered category or the vulnerable category. So examples of such species are the Asiatic buffalo, brown bear and hornbill. So these are examples of species which are rare because they as such do not have a very big population and with a small population if we neglect them or if we you know kill them then there are high chances that they will become extinct. Now we move on to the fifth category that is endemic species. So these are the species which are found in specific areas. So you do not get them everywhere. Only in some specific areas they are found. So these species are isolated by natural or geographical barriers. For example, if you talk about the Andaman tea. So this bird is specifically found in the Andaman island and not anywhere else. And if you see, if you look at the map of India, the, this island of Andaman is geographically isolated from India, right? Similarly, the wild pig, which is again found in the Andaman. The Nicobar pigeon, so Andaman and Nicobar islands, they have all these uh, animals which are endemic species because they are found in a specific area. Now, why do we need this data about endemic species? Because if we know this, that okay, these are the animals which are specifically found in this particular area, then we can take necessary action in that area to protect and preserve those animals. And then the last category is extinct. That means the species which are not found anymore and this is what we are trying to prevent organisms from. So we are trying to prevent organisms from being extinct because once they are extinct then nothing can be done about them because once all the population or each and every individual of a particular species are gone then we can't do anything to revive that species. So examples of extinct species are the Asiatic cheetah. So cheetah is, was declared as extinct in India in the year 1952. Now when we talk about extinct species, now a species may be extinct from a local area, it could be extinct from a country or it could be extinct from the earth. For example, when we listen to stories of dinosaurs. So dinosaurs once existed on earth. But now they have become totally extinct. We do not find dinosaurs anywhere in the world. But when you talk about the cheetah, it was declared extinct in India specifically in 1952. So there are chances that cheetah was found in other areas, maybe in Africa or in some other continent or country, cheetah was still found. So when we say extinct, that extinct could be from a local area, it could be from a country or a continent or the entire earth as well. Another example of extinct species is the pink-headed duck. So by looking at the picture, you can understand why is it called a pink-headed duck, right? So these are examples of the extinct species. So with this, we have covered all the categories of uh, existing species as per IUCN. Now, how will this help us? This will help us to know which species is in which category and what action do we need to take to protect that particular species of plant and animal. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.